welcome to Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is. I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. This is episode 461 of the podcast. Yes, yes, little Lebowski Urban Achievers, and proud we are of all of that. Bunny! Yes. This is not Jeff. Just want to make that clear. No Jeff. No Jeff. This upcoming this upcoming segment is in fact not a reoccurring opening podcast segment entitled Jeff, aka the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends download today. Because this time I thought I'd do something different. I thought I'd toss things up in the intro. So today we are going back to the 1970s with an all new opening segment that I like to call the Pope on Film Variety Hour. Okay. I just thought the name sounded cool. This has nothing to do with the 1970s. I just like the idea of the Pope on Film Variety Hour. I just like to mentally picture you and I coming out in like sequin jumpsuits. Yeah. Doing like an up with people musical number <laughs> to like some what? Who's that? Special guest Harvey Corman. You know, I like it. So, uh, the Pope on Film Ver Variety Hour is brought to you this week by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. And by Dolly Madison Zingers. Bit of news, Bumford. Yes. This first bit of news is just mwah, chef's kiss in parentheses. This bit of news is actually from 2020, but it has been going viral, viral again online and on the social medias. On December 1st, 2020, an anti-gay Hungarian politician named Joseph Sager. There's a there's a Z in the first name and a Z in the last name, and it just sprinkled with Z's. <clears throat> uh, Joseph Sager, a far right politician who played a key role in, in the country's crackdown on LGBTQ rights in Hungary was caught trying to flee the scene of a 25-man gay sex orgy. Nice! Hooray! That's how you do it. <coughs> the nation's leading anti-gay bigot breached the nation's strict COVID lockdown policies to go to a gay orgy, and when police arrived, he attempted to flee the orgy by jumping through the window. Like you do. Yeah. And here's the thing. Um, when it comes to the far right, no matter the country, no matter the circumstances, far right accusations are always confessions. Always. Oh, God, yeah. For example, in America right now, the right is absolutely obsessed with Hunter Biden and the Biden's crime family and the Biden corruption. And because Trump and his entire family royally screwed over the entire nation, every far-right accusation is a confession. And so when conservative Christians, with finger quotes, uh, attack me online... I know that they have a folder titled "She Mail Porn" somewhere on their computer. Yeah, yes, they do. That's just a that's just a fact. Sure. Look at the camera. Hi, Eleanor. Say hi. So say it again. Get to her own house. Yes, Emerald is moving out. Mm -hmm. Eleanor wanted to bring this up because that means that you have your own room now. Yeah. So, all right. We mentioned that. What did I just do? Well, how, Am I still how, on? Yes. Yeah. How does that work? Is it like kind of a domino? 
effective. Yes, uh, Emerald moved out. Emerald moved out, so Mal got. So, Emerald moved out, so Amber got Emerald's room. So that means Eleanor has their own room. And then when Amber moves out, Mal will get Amber's room, and Max will get his own room. It's a whole thing. So it is very much a domino effect, though. That so, is true. So is, is Mal possibly sitting on the couch circling apartment ads? And <laughs> I'm not... Leave, I'm not leaving sure. him under Amber's like dinner plate or something? <laughs> Yeah, Amber's Amber's chomping at the bit to get out of the house. In lighter news, the atomic bomb! Yay! So Japan has been pretty pissed off about all the Barbie Heimer memes. And understandable. So uh, people in Japan countered by posting Barbie 9 11 memes. Yeah online and uh, Japan was all like yeah you don't like that do ya and I you know fair point I think quite possibly it's kind of effed up that we did make a movie which is basically America bravely heroically bombed the shit out of the Japanese and so like I did not complete the viral Barbenheimer challenge. I don't have any no. particular want or need to go see Oppenheimer. No, and like, like that's the part I'm glad is is over, or hopefully over soon. The Barbieheimer thing was cute at first. Oh, look at these two mm -hmm. radically different movies. Coming out on the same day. Yeah, that was cute. Yeah. Barbie and Opener. Yeah, that was cute. But, like, after a while, it's like, oh, fucking stop it already. Like, you're running this joke into the ground. These movies Absolutely. have nothing to do with each other. You can see one yeah. without seeing the other. Yeah, and it just I don't. Tells me I just that don't particularly. I made a lot care. more money than it really should have. Yeah, and to be clear, I'm not just saying that I don't want to see Oppenheimer because my older brother Joe said that he loved it. Oh, picture of the year, superb acting, so beautifully haunting. My brother has also been posting a lot of Joe Rogan clips on his Facebook, which should tell you a lot about my older brother. Yes. I saw a review of Oppenheimer that said, spoiler free review, and it's like, damn it, ah! Uh, I've been wondering if, if, if America ever dropped that bomb. Yeah. Man, now I'll we'll never know. No, I, I, I am probably never going to see this movie. I saw Fat Man and Little Boy with Paul Newman, John Cusack, and a whole bunch of other great people. I don't need this. I've seen this story. Yeah. I, uh... It's like watching another Titanic movie. You know? Instead of, instead of watching the three-hour Oppenheimer, I'd rather watch... Atomic Cafe twice. Uh, now, Atomic now, that's Cafe a great is a documentary. That's a wonderful, incredible, superb documentary. Mm -hmm. I'd won't watch that twice before I saw Oppenheimer once. But on the subject of Oppenheimer and Barbenheimer, did you hear about AMC Theaters, Bunny? Uh, not lately. The last I heard was they were going to uh, be putting in, like, preferred seating prices or some weird shit like that. Oh, yeah, they 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 gave that up. Uh, but thanks to the one-two punch of Barbie and Oppenheimer, AMC Theaters had the single highest grossing weekend in the company's 103-year history. Wow. Isn't that, a, isn't that 
freaking amaze balls. That blows my mind. Oppenheimer would not have done as well uh, as as it did if it wasn't for the fact that Barbie was coming out no. the same day. Like Barbie saved Oppenheimer. Yeah, but um, as I said earlier, I have no interest in completing the Barbenheimer challenge. However, uh, first off, I'm really excited that because of Barbie and Oppenheimer, more people can get the uh, new thing that I made for the intro for the intro of this podcast. Yes, I'm happy that more Americans are realizing that somehow heartbreak feels good in a place like this. I'm happy about that, but I have no interest in watching Barbenheimer. However, did you hear about what's happening at the end of September, Bonnie? I think I heard something stupid, but my mind blocked it out. What is it? Saw Patrol! Oh, Saw Patrol. On September 29th, Saw 10 and Paw Patrol 2 are coming out, and that one, I absolutely intend to watch the both of those films on the same day. The, the problem that I'm having right now is, Bunny, which one should I go see first? Should I go see Saw 10? Man, or should I, I go see put up a case Paw Patrol? for either one of them. Like, in my mind, I assumed that I'd see Saw first because I've seen all of the Saw films. We did the Summer of Saw. And, and then... If the movie's really fucked up, I can go see Paw Patrol and it'll be like I'm power washing my brain. Yeah. But the kids pointed out the kids pointed out something really wonderful when I was talking to them about Saw Patrol, which is I won't want to see the fucking Paw Patrol movie. I will want to see the new Saw, so maybe yeah. I should save Saw to the end and force myself to get through Paw Patrol so I can see Saw. See I Saw. am gonna go I think see you Saw. should see Paw Patrol first because and then up and Paw Patrol might make you feel happy. It might make you feel like a bit uplifted and maybe a bit more positive in your life. And you're an American. We can't have that. So we're gonna. So That's afterwards, you'll have to watch the Saw movie to get back into the hopeless, desperate, scared, defeated place that American citizens need to be in. Yeah, in order to live in our current time. Yeah, I get it, buddy. Yes. I've been waiting to tell you this news. I learned this a couple of days ago. It blew my mind, and I have been waiting specifically to tell you. Jeff Jarrett, the wrestler, used to live next door to Taylor Swift, and Taylor Swift would regularly babysit Jeff Jarrett's kids. Was that before or after he was eating Subway sandwiches? No, not that. No, different Jared. I'm talking about Jeff Jarrett, the wrestler, Double J. Jeff Jarrett. He with had the a guitar. guitar. He would hit okay. people. He would he would hit people over the head with the guitar and call them slap nuts. He's one of the reasons why I stopped watching WCW. <laughs> okay. And Impact. Now he's on AEW, and it's like, Ugh. but. Um, so oh, a he picture cra he appeared. He crashed TNA? Uh, AEW, yeah. No, Jeff Jarrett AEW eventually now. crashed his own company? Yeah. Yeah. Good. He good crashes on. every company he's in, which is good why I'm a bit him. worried that he's in <laughs> AEW right now. But, <laughs> so... Jeff so Jarrett, there, the destroyer pictures, of wrestling. So pictures leaked of Taylor Swift hanging out and playing the piano with Jeff Jarrett and his family. And people online said, oh, this must be 
Look at that, Jeff Jarrett and Taylor Swift. This must be Photoshop. Who in their right minds would Photoshop Taylor Swift and Jeff Jarrett in the same picture? Jeff Jarrett. That's who. <laughs> It, it just makes no sense. Like, oh, I've been working nonstop for the past three days without sleep, but I've finally done it. I've photoshopped a picture of Bronson Pinchot and Judith Light having a brunch. <laughs> like, why would anyone do this? Why have you spent time and energy? So, yeah, Taylor Swift and uh, Jeff Jarrett, good friends. Isn't that weird to that, know? That, that is a bit weird, yeah. yeah. It's weird. And one final I, bit of news before okay, we get ahead. to this week's very, very powerful hack. Uh, where am I? Scientists at USC believe that they can make the human body regrow cartilage by studying lizards and how they regrow their tails. Now, in related news, apparently scientists at USC have never read a fucking Spider-Man comic book. <laughs> because damn, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want li the lizard? Because that's how you get the lizard. Yes. Oh, yes. funny. This just in. Scientists at USC, has a, they have successfully invented four long metal arms that attach to your torso and can be controlled with thoughts. Yeah. Nothing Very can go exciting. wrong there. Oh, wait. Funny. More breaking news. Scientists at USC ha have discovered a way to turn green sweatered white men into sand. Yes. Huge news out of USC. But that, go one's, with the gonna other be, that one's gonna be handy. That one really yeah. is. You know? I, I mean, yeah. Spray oh, wait, graffiti funny. over the wall. You know, just use the green sweater's hand guy. Bunny, I'm sorry to have to interrupt you. I've got yet even more breaking news. Yes? A scientist at USC has successfully proven the existence of vampires. When questioned for comment, the lead scientist simply said, It's more than time. Yes. Oh! Bunny, one final bit of breaking news. I couldn't write one for Venom. I tried, oh. but I couldn't think of one. And that's the last bit of breaking news. I didn't know how to word a Venom one right. But anyway, stay the hell away from USC, because they're making a Sinister Six. Yes, they are. So just s stay the fuck away from that whole campus, because... They're making supervillains over there. Yes. Whoa. That's scary. So anyway, that's it for, um, what did I call it? The Popon Film Variety Hour. Um, we're going to take a, just, a, just a swipe, and we're going to move into the historical part of all our podcast, which I think I can do before uh, Zoom shuts off. Okay, I think I can do it. 